Hi church family, Pastor Fallon here with your devotion for today. I want to talk to you about prioritizing intimacy with the Lord. In this time of prayer and fasting, it really is the perfect time to take inventory of our heart posture towards the Lord and just really make sure that everything that we're doing is flowing from a place of true connection and affection towards the Lord. Uh, if you have spent any time with me, you probably heard me say things like, make sure you abide in Christ, stay connected to the vine, um, making sure our heart posture is right. You know, a lot of phrases that connect to intimacy because I've learned that in my walk with the Lord, that he really puts high importance on this because I believe if we're not careful, we can find ourselves doing and striving and doing for the Lord and really lack true connection to him. And if that happens, it really is a dangerous place to be. And this is why I think that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, 21 through 23. It says this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not cast out demons in your name? Have I not done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I know you're thinking right now, how could you choose this scripture? <laughs> this scripture scares me every time I read it. Because, and, and for a good reason, right? Because God is saying, got it. there's an urgency. He's trying to put an urgency within us to say, hey, I love that you're doing these things for me. I love that you want to do things in my name because you believe and you and you love me. But I don't neglect time with me. This when it when it says here I never knew you, that Greek root word is gnosko, which means to know intimately. So what the Lord is saying here is I see that you've done all these things, but I don't know you in a personal way like I want to. And, and you never took the time to know me. And then I look at Revelation chapter two and he talks to the church of Ephesus and he says pretty much the same kind of thing. Jesus is saying to them, I see your labor for me. I see your works. I see your patience. I see the fruits of the spirit working in you. Nevertheless, there's just one thing I have against you that you have left your first love. So here we see again, and these are just a few of many verses throughout the Bible that talk about people doing works for the Lord, but neglecting connection with the Lord. And over and over and over again, God is pointing them back to intimacy, pointing them back to connection, pointing them back to love and to fellowship and to make sure you stay connected because you really can't do these other things effectively unless you're connected to me. So all throughout scripture, he speaks of this. If we go back to Moses and the Israelites, what is one of the first commandments God gave them? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. God will always lead us on a road that keeps us close to him. Intimacy with the Lord is by his design from the very beginning. And this is what I see throughout scripture. And that's why I want to encourage you to make that a priority in your life. Intimacy with him. Each one of these scriptures speak of serving the Lord, doing mighty things in his name, speaking of him with our lips, declaring things declaring his word with our lips, but none of it was satisfactory to him because their hearts were far from him. Now, all these things are necessary and needed and have to be done. Work has to be done. Things have to be done with our hands. We have to declare things. God tells us to declare things, but it's when we do these things, but neglect devotion and neglect time with him that it becomes out of order. And then he has to ring us back in or reel us back in and say, Hey, don't forget this major part. And really the most important part. And really the major reason why I even created you and it, and it is to be intimate with me. Um, so what pierces my soul with these scriptures in revelation and Matthew, and even in Isaiah chapter 29 
is that when every time the Lord had to address these things, there was judgment to follow because they left their first love. So there was always a chance to correct it, and, I, and that's his mercy. But there was always judgment if it wasn't corrected. I'll never forget what I heard my mentor say years ago. She was talking uh, to me and she said, I serve at the pleasure of the king. And that stuck to me because that's our heart, heart's motto, right? As sons and daughters of God, as the bride of Christ to say, I serve at the pleasure of the king. Whatever he asks, whatever he wants me to do, I just want to be close to him and serve him at his pleasure. And the way to please him is to be intimate with him. Because in John chapter 15, the Lord teaches us that when we abide in the vine of Christ, when we stay connected to him, that's how we bear fruit so that others can taste and see that God is good. But there is really no other way to bear fruit except for to be connected to him. So how do you build that intimacy? You build it through reading the word, through intentional time with him, spending time with him in prayer, spending time just talking to him, uh, worshiping the Lord, singing to him, making him priority in your life. That's we, we can't get caught up in counterfeit intimacy. Don't worry about the world, what the world says. Pick up the Bible and see what God says about intimacy. And that's what he's looking for. This is a tough subject to talk about because it often requires sacrifice and letting go of some things that we hold dear. And in fact, I've had to let go of a few things I've been holding tightly on recently myself. And it was very hard. But I came to the decision a long time ago that if there has to be an exchange in any situation that I'm in, then I'm going to choose Jesus. And that's the key, is to choose Jesus again and again every day. And that's how you know that you are building on relationship with him to say, if I have to let this go, you're worth it, Jesus. If you say no to this, I trust you because you are for me and you will withhold no good thing from me. And I want to encourage you with that. Whatever God may ask you to let go of, know that he has something better for you. So I want to encourage you to really focus on building relationship and uh, intimacy with the Lord this year and let it be become a lifestyle for you and watch how God just um, does mighty things through you as you bear fruit for his kingdom so that others may see he is good. And I just want to encourage you. If, if you haven't really been close to him before, no condemnation. Start today. It's just that simple. His eyes are always fixed on you. He's always ready to hear from you. He loves you with a deep love. And you have purpose and a plan. And the way to walk that out is by staying connected to him. So I'm going to leave you with this scripture. In Psalm chapter 100 verse 5 says this, For the Lord is always good and ready to receive you. He's so loving that it will amaze you, so kind that it will astound you. And he is famous for his faithfulness toward all. Everyone knows our God can be trusted for he keeps his promises to every generation. Be encouraged, family.